Imagine being able to captivate your audience and have them hanging on every single word you say. Imagine delivering a presentation so powerful that folks are lined up to work with you on a repeat basis moving forward. This happens when you have a much deeper understanding of who your audience is. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to analyze your audience in these three powerful steps and a bonus step so that that way you can deliver powerful presentations that get folks paying you to come back and do it all over again. First thing we gotta do if we wanna analyze our audiences effectively is we have to understand who they are. Okay, who is your audience? So in my world, for example, because I'm a peak performance expert and keynote speaker, I literally get asked to speak to all different types of audiences. Sometimes the audience is in the automotive industry. Sometimes that audience is in the financial services and insurance industry. Sometimes that audience is in the agricultural industry. So the first thing I have to do if I really wanna analyze my audience, I gotta ask myself this question, who are these people? Does that make sense? It's not just enough to know, okay, what company they represent. Cause you could speak to a big company and in inside that company of a thousand people at this conference, let's just say, there could be all different types of people in that there could be, there could be salespeople, there could be marketing people, there could be CEO level folks, you got C-suite executives, right? You could have administrative folks, right? You could have entrepreneurs. So you gotta get clear about who are these individuals that I'm speaking to, right? So I really want you to kind of delve a little bit deeper, scratch below the surface and get clear, who am I speaking to? And if you don't know that, then ask your client, tell me a little bit more about the demographics of who's in the audience. That's what you wanna ask. What percentage is men? What percentage of women? What percentage is of, of, represent the different generations in the workplace, right? What percent of these individuals are voluntary attendees versus those who are who are required to be there these are all important things to know so that you can crush it the second thing you got to do if you want to analyze your audience better is you got to understand what they want from your presentation is your presentation supposed to be inspiring is it supposed to be lighthearted and fun is it supposed to be humorous is your presentation supposed to be hard-hitting and like paradigm shifting is your presentation supposed to evoke excitement enthusiasm correction fear you want to understand what the client wants their audience Audience to get out of this presentation? Do they want them to leave inspired? Do they want them to leave challenged? Do they want them to leave encouraged? Do they want them to leave feeling united, right? One of the biggest reasons why I get booked all over the world is because companies not only just want me to come in and, and deliver these incredible talks and presentations, but they really want to unite, okay? They're trying to unite the people in the room. They're trying to get their, their teams, and their organizations to kind of focus on one heartbeat, right? And really be one group. So I, I do a lot of unifying types of exercise exercises and activities in my presentation to make everybody in that room feel like they're all a part of the same team. Does that make sense? And every company and every organization wants their employees and team members to perform as one harmonious unit, which is awesome, right? Third thing you gotta do if you wanna analyze your audience well is not only do you have to care about what they want, but you gotta make sure that you also deliver on what they need. Well, Dr. Del Toro, what do you mean? What's the difference between what they want versus what they need, okay? While they might want you to be motivational and inspirational and all this other kind of great stuff, that might be what they want. You also, you, so you have to deliver on that, but you also gotta get clear about what they need. What does this audience need at this particular point in this organization's evolution? In other words, if this company just went through a merger, is it possible that while they want inspiration and rah-rah, that they also need better communication skills, better empathy skills? Is it possible that they need a break from working remotely to get everybody back in person again? Or maybe they've been in person too much and now they need a little bit of a retreat? Is it possible that the audience needs more cutting edge strategies to know what, what the newest, latest, greatest trends are because some of the tactics and strategies that they've been implementing might be a little bit old school and don't even work anymore. Does that make sense? In other words, you're using Walkman strategies in a Spotify world. Does that make sense? You're using old tactics in the world today where it doesn't, it's not even relevant. Does that make sense? So you gotta know what the audience wants, but you also gotta get clear about what they need. And you gotta be careful as to how you deliver what they need and what they want simultaneously. Does that make sense? I, I love to liken this to getting a massage, okay? <laughs> Who's ever gotten a massage before, right? Hello, right? So I love getting massages. And one of the things that I love to do when I go get a massage is I love to say, I say, listen, okay, I want you to focus on these three areas, right? right this shoulder or that, 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 that trap and then, you know, my lower back or whatever. And then I get on the table, next thing you know, the masseuse finds knots in three or four other parts of my body. Now, I told them what I wanted, right? But guess what? As they felt around in my muscle tissue, they saw where I needed to get those knots worked out. And they focused on getting those knots out. And guess what? It made my whole body feel better. What's my point? Sometimes the client 
doesn't fully know 100% of everything it is that they need in the presentation. That's why you have to be really good at what it is that you do. You gotta be a subject matter expert in your content, so much so that although the bullet points of what you promise to deliver are X, Y, and Z, you gotta know how to deliver X, Y, and Z and then jump over to A, B, and C and give them a little bit of that too to make sure that you not only deliver what they want to hear, but also what they what, y'all? What they need to hear. Does that make sense? Hey, if you enjoy this video, listen, do me a favor, click the link below and pick up a copy of our brand new book, Platinum Presentations, 52 Tips to Speak with Confidence, Win Your Audience, and Grow Your Bank Account. Once you've done that, you gotta take the final step and you gotta ask yourself this question. What do I have in common with my audience? See, this is where I like to have fun, right? For example, I remember I was speaking for a group of farmers, right? The whole audience was people that have had farming in their family for decades, like literally, like just passed down from family to family to family, all the generations. And so the first words out of my mouth when I gave my presentation was, we're in the same business. We grow people. I grow people, you grow food. I grow people, you grow animals, but we grow individual. We help humanity grow. That's how I started my presentation. Does that make sense? So simply by saying we help humanity grow, all of a sudden it's not Dr. Del Toro versus the farmers, what? It's now we are one. Does that make sense? So what was what's amazing is and this is a powerful bonus is you gotta get you gotta find out. Listen, maybe you have something in common with this audience, but you gotta go back to your college days to figure out what that connection is. For example, maybe a lot of the folks in this audience went to your alma mater. Bring that up in your presentation. Or maybe the CEO of this company drives the same car you do. Bring that up in the presentation. Or maybe this particular client they they love some of the same fashion and apparel that you wear and that you you shop at the same stores. I found something that we all had in common, and that thing was pride for the country that I was speaking in. Does that make sense? You can find commonalities anywhere. You can even learn the first couple of words of, let's, speak, let's say you're speaking to an international audience. You can learn the first couple of words of a greeting in that culture's native tongue. So when you go in front of a Korean audience, maybe the first couple of words out of your mouth could be good morning in Korean. Does that make sense? So there's so many different ways you can find out what you have in common. And maybe what you have in common is a belief system. We all believe in the importance of X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Does that make sense? So the more, my friend, the more you really understand your audience, the more you can transform your audience. Because at the end of the day, people like to do business with folks that they know, like, and trust. And the more that you incorporate these concepts into your analysis of your network, audience you will build no like and trust factor and they will literally jump over themselves to work with you again can't wait to see you in the next video let's crush it